Okay, so welcome back. This is part three in our series in developing this circuit you see here uh, that we put together in LT Spice. And the goal of this is to measure uh, and to plot and monitor on a long-term basis the frequency of the 60 hertz wall outlet voltage that we have here in the U.S. You can do 50 hertz wherever you are. And um, what we're going to do in this video is we are going to take the next step after the first two videos and we're going to write some Arduino code to um, take the signal we have from this circuit you see here that we talked about in the previous videos and it's going to figure out the frequency of the uh, wall outlet voltage. And again, I encourage you to watch the first two parts in this series. And also there's another series on using uh, a voltage sensor that we're going to use in this circuit. We go into detail in our uh, RMS voltage monitor series on this voltage sensor that we're going to be using here. But in this video, we're going to figure out the Arduino code to take this square wave that comes out of this circuit that matches the frequency, hopefully, of the wall outlet voltage. We're going to take this square wave into the Arduino and figure out how to make the Arduino figure out how long it is between cycles, how many seconds per cycle. From that, we can calculate frequency or cycles per second. And we're going to use the functionality in the Arduino where it can sense this rising edge and start a timer when it sees the rising edge. And the timer is going to count and count and count until it sees the next rising edge and then stop the timer and figure out, okay, I've got how many counts between rising edges and that correlates to the frequency of the signal. What we're going to do is um, write a sketch here, and here's my sketch. And honestly, a lot of this is just kind of copy and paste of some of the code you need to uh, configure the internal functionality of the Arduino. I think it's the AT Mega 328 interrupts and the events and the timers. It's basically built-in functionality that you just have to set up. There's not a lot of code here, and I've included a lot of uh, comments to explain what's going on. But again, you just have to kind of copy and paste most of this to set it up. We don't have to do any initial setups like load any libraries. We're just going to start with a void setup. And since we're going to do a COM port, we do serial.begin, and I pick 9600 just because. And as we said, this code's purpose is to uh, sense the rising edge that occurs at each cycle of the incoming waveform, which is a square wave, sense that rising edge, start a timer, and then when it sees the next rising edge, it will stop the timer and figure out how much time has elapsed between rising edges. So as you, you can read here, the code uses an internal timer, timer one, and there's multiple timers in the Arduino, but we're going to use timer one to count at a rate of 2 million counts per second, or 2 megahertz, between rising edge pulses. Now, since the internal counter clock is 16 megahertz, we're going to apply what's called internally in the Arduino a prescaler of 8 to divide that 16 megahertz to get 2 megahertz. So for a 60 hertz signal, the timer count for one cycle should be 2 million, right, 2 megahertz divided by 60 or 33,333 counts between rising edges, okay? So now we know what to expect from this. We're going to expect something around 33,333 counts uh, between rising edges, and that will be 60 hertz, and that's going to change depending on the incoming frequency. So the first thing we have to do is configure this uh, timer one, and we use this TCCR1A equals zero. Honestly, I forget. It's been a while since I did this, but you got to set this up. Um, and the next line set up this prescaler. TCCR1B equals 2. T count 1 equals 0. And that preloads a value of 0 to the timer 1, which does a reset. And then TMSK1, which is an, an internal timer 1 overflow interrupt which when it uh, overflows, it doesn't interrupt. Again, uh, you can look into the details of that. And then there's an EIFR not equal to 1, which clears this internal INT0 flag. 
And then, so this is all configuration stuff you need to do, and this just copy and paste. And then you have to define the interrupt that will be initiated by a rising edge that we're going to connect to digital pin 2 on the Arduino. So it's going to look for a rising edge on digital pin 2. And the interrupt service routine function that will be called is timer underscore get. Okay, so we're going to have a function down here. You can see timer one underscore get, and that's the interrupt service routine that gets called when it senses an interrupt. So this is the attached in, attach interrupt function, and we're going to say digital pin to interrupt, and this is just saying look at digital pin two for the um, rising edge, and when you see that rising edge, comma timer one get run this timer one get function and you're going to need to look for a rising edge you can also look for a falling edge and there's other options but this is how we're going to set it up to sense digital pin 2 run timer one get function when you see a rising edge so um again and we've got another um unsigned int timer one equals zero and then we got two values two floats the period and the frequency we're going to need when we do the calculation. And then here is the um, timer one get function that gets called on the rising edge. And um, we are first setting timer one to the latest clock count. So that should be something like we said, like 33,333 for a 60 hertz wave. So this T count one is going to be the count that gets updated every every time the timer counts down and so we're going to set timer one to what's going to be like 33,333 and then reset the timer to zero so it can start again okay so at this point after one cycle or two rising edges timer one should see about 33,333 and here's another um, required method, um, ISR timer one underscore OF, OVF underscore VECT. Again, I forget what that is. Uh, and that is, then we set timer one equals zero. So you need that. So that's all the setup. And here's the loop that does the actual calculation. And it uses this timer one value of the number of counts that it got for the latest clock uh, count and it's going to operate on that so now value is set to the current timer one value again that's the timer one or the 33,333 which is an integer number of counts again it's at a rate of two million counts per between rising edge interrupts so again for a 60 hertz signal value should be 33,333 and then from that, now we know how many counts at two megahertz count rate. Then we can calculate the signal period in milliseconds. Um, since 8.0 is the timer one prescaler and 16,000 is the clock frequency per millisecond for a 60 hertz waveform, the period or a number of seconds in one cycle is the value or the 33,333 times 8 over 16 million, which means 33,000 times 8 over 16 million, or it should give you a value of a period of 16.666 milliseconds for 60 hertz. And that's what this period should be. To calculate the signal frequency, which is this, 16 million divided by 8 times timer value, or 2 million divided by 33,333, we can figure out the frequency in this equation right here. Now note that um, you'll see 8UL, which is a, I've got here, it's a fancy way of declaring a number 8 as an unsigned long. Um, it's used in other languages, 8UL, that's why some people use this 8UL, because it's more prevalent in other languages. To me, I don't care, I'd rather use just unsigned long. But So if the value is 0, frequency is 0, Else, if value is not zero, then frequency is 0.035 times 16 million over 8 times value. And then we just print the frequency, serial print line, and then wait for one second and do it again. Okay, so I'm only grabbing um, values at 
every one second. It's calculating the frequency at every one second. So that is the fairly simple Arduino code. Again, there's some of it that you just got to have to make everything work. But if you work through the math here, you can see that you're basically just figuring out how many counts, figure out what that is in milliseconds for a period, and then calculating frequency from one over that. So that's the Arduino code. What we're going to do next is we are going to put that code into Arduino uh, Uno and hook it up and see what we get for frequency results. And we're going to feed that um, from the Arduino into something like Excel Data Streamer, where we can look in real time and chart it and see what kind of results we get, and whether they're accurate enough uh, or if there's noise or whatever. OK, so in the next video, we're going to put all this code into an Arduino Uno. And we're going to hook it up to the circuit we developed in the previous videos. And we're going to see what kind of results we get, how accurate they are, and we're going to compare the uh, results from the voltage sensor we're using with a reference signal generator that generates the same uh, low voltage sine wave signal and convert that to a square wave and see if we get um, accurate results from this, the voltage sensor. And if not, if we're going to have to modify our circuit or do a redesign. So anyway, I encourage you to, to join us in the future videos. And if you like any of these videos, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell notifications. And most of all, let others know that we're here to help us increase the viewership. Otherwise, take care and have a really good day. Thanks.